Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire to turn down my headset volumes and I can hear myself speak because that's exactly the intro I was going for with a brand new lock here on the channel for Scar to Swap Force like called Brightness Lock. Now this has your traditional lock rules to where whenever I lose a Scar to Run Battle their class is dead and cannot be used again for, for the remainder of the playthrough and it asks for elemental areas appearing throughout the levels when one pops up and will swap out for whatever light course corresponding to the element and cannot swap out again until the element of the area changes with small very very basic all that that you might notice the brightness part of the name of the series well that's simply because you might tell that this layout right now is looking a little bland a little um dark you could say so naturally whenever i place a light core character onto the portal they are going to brighten up the display a little bit so piece by piece for display each episode is going to be coming brighter and brighter and brighter so yeah, we've got plenty to look forward to in this lock, it's just a kind of simple um, editing style I wanted to go for and that came and that gave me the perfect excuse to play through Swap Force with an excellent cast because I tell you what, all 16 Nightcore characters are all fantastic. I think we can beat this lock with Drobot, Flashwing, Smaller Dash and Bubble Ass alone and on top of that we also got characters like Chill, Star Strike, Popfish, just all excellent characters that are phenomenal in locks. So without further ado, let's get into this. Um, we ain't gonna chicken out, we ain't gonna make this easy on ourselves. We're going for nightmare mode. So yes, definitely uh, be in for quite a wild ride. And speaking of wild rides, this uh, opening cinematic certainly is quite a wild ride, but we're gonna skip through all that because the gameplay looks normal. There's no sort of adjusted edit to them. I'm not inverting the colors, I'm not making them black and white. So because I've seen these cut cutscenes time and time again, and you've seen these cutscenes time and time again, why would I waste your time in having sat through them for the umpteenth million time? Uh, speaking of characters, uh, speaking of umpteenth million times even, um, what I was alluding to earlier is the character that I've played for most at all the light calls, so time for me to place light call small left on the portal for the umpteenth millionth time. And I know that's a lot of umpteenth millionths for the uh, premiere here of the Skanders What Force Light Call Brightness look. That's quite a mouthful. But yeah, I am pumped. We already have some accolades, which is great because uh, stars give us an increased portmaster rank. And the higher our portmaster rank, the more items we can buy at Tuck Shop. And here's the thing: buys with like charms and hats. It ain't cheating. I'm gonna do it. There's your foreshadowing for the episode. You're welcome. But yeah, uh, this is going to go back to the basics, and what I mean by that is that it's going to follow the same schedule as what the core inversion mod did when I played through Skarna's Trap Team. I'm going to be uploading this every single Monday, so it's going to be a weekly day series. Purely because I've tried to do it twice a week with the Superchargers and Warlock, and it just overwhelmed me, so better stick to a week instead. That and also these uh, episodes are going to be one level long, so chances are they are going to be a lot shorter than the norm. But I will be including boss fights um, as the level uh, in the same episode, even as the level which precedes them. So the firefighter, for example, isn't going to be its own episode. It's going to be tied in with the um, Twisty Tunnels episode. Ooh, cinematic! Pretty sure I could skip that one. And if I could, then I just wasted time. How dare I waste time? Stinking valuable time. You just don't do that. That's a big no-no. Hey, we have screamers. So if you guys want to play along with this lock and try it for yourself, you go on ahead. I'm sure you'll be even better at it than me because I am the self-proclaimed worst best um, Skarners player. So there are a lot of best Skarners player on YouTube titles out there. Um, and naturally, of all the people who own that title, I'm the worst at having it. So, so that therefore makes me the worst of the best. And I'd rather be the worst of the best than the best of the worst. Even though considering the number of Skytubers we have at the moment, whilst it is significantly high, it's not as high as it was when the game was on the peak of its popularity, so naturally I'm pretty sure the worst of the best translates to basically the same as the best of the worst, knowing that there's not too much variety in that pool. Oh, the cutscenes are really quiet. My bad, I'm going to have to adjust those in the edit. Oh wait, no I'm not, because I'm just going to skip the cutscenes as soon as the opportunity becomes available. There you go. Okay, I'm going to go back here and collect this here, the item, just because I feel like it. 
But yeah, for those of you who don't know, Smaller Dash is my second favourite style of all time, and that's most likely not going to change anytime soon because she's a badass. Look at this design, it's incredible. And not to mention, she combines speed and power so phenomenally. She is easily one of the quickest and most powerful Skylanders. And not to mention, she has such a chaos in her moveset. It just flows and chains together so smoothly. She is so much fun to play as. Second only to your boy Ignitor. You know, if Ignitor was a light core as well as Small Dash, then that would just be sheer perfection. That would blow my mind. But unfortunately, he got a rupture instead. Literally the only thing that he could have done that was worse than give us Lightcore or Ruptor was Lightcore like Sunburn. And even then I know a lot of you would have really liked Lightcore like Sunburn because Sunburn is the only Skylander from SSA to never have been reintroduced later in the franchise in some form or another. Like sure not every Skylander from SSA got a repo uh, got a yeah, a repost necessarily, but they did get stuff like like cores and Eons Elites down the line. It's a shame though, because I would have quite liked to have seen what a wow power would look like for characters like Dino Rang and um, Whamshell, for example. Whamshell, one of those characters that we get to play in this lock. Yeah, last time I checked, I am real life. Anyway, going back to the whole uh, Sunburn debacle. Yes, he is the only character from Spyro's Adventure who seems to have been forgotten even by the developers, but. Naturally, that's kind of like what makes him in comparison to other SSA characters more memorable than all of them. You tend to, as psycho psychology goes, remember the stuff that is forgotten the most. Like, take TV shows, for example. When a plotline is like a bad one, you tend to remember that plotline more so than the on-running ones, just because you have them back of your mind that that is going to return or come back at some point, and it just doesn't. So instead, it remains in your mind with no sort of resolution and it frustrates you, it really does. Even when it's a poor um, plot line, you still want to see it um, concluded. You know, you don't want to see stuff just uh, ab ab abandoned. And since Sunburn was kind of abandoned and forgotten, it's what by process of elimination makes him so much more memorable than other SSA characters who return so frequently, so he just kind of fled our mind because we were tired of seeing him. Unless the uh, characters like Eruptor, which we've basically seen in every Skylanders game. You know, it's kind of hard to forget him when he's rammed constantly down your throat. Well, but characters who just came back in Giants, but then come, then come back after, you know, characters like Flameslinger maybe, are a little less memorable. That was a bad example, everybody remembers Flameslinger, he is a huge fan favourite. And very close to my top 10 as well, he's my 13th favourite Skylander. Ooh, we got ourselves a screwball. Let's screw with the screwball. Yeah. So what I love about these levels is that they might be huge and, and really, really long, but they have plenty of clips all scattered around, so the areas never feel barren and empty like that right there. We found some more elements of blue missing stuff right here. Oh yeah, I mentioned earlier about how chaotic small did actually be. That right there is a fine example. I mean, this is Nightmare Mode. When you play with Small Dash, you cannot tell. She is so annihilative. So in other words, so long as she and Trobo are still alive, there's always hope. You know, we could just lose every single scar on her this level, but as long as Small Dash and Drobo live, then chaos is screwed. It's like Star Wars, you know? In Star Wars, everybody could die, but so long as R2-D2 is left around, you know, the bad guys did kind of chance. The First Order, what he was really afraid of the entire time, was R2-D2. That was their true threat. Which makes me, you know, just oof, have nightmares about the mere thought of R2-D2 being a bad guy. Okay, if, if, if the bad guys in Star Wars had R2-D2, you know, the Empire of the First Order, all that jazz. And for good guys, for heroes, they be screwed. They are so lucky that they were left with the First Order and the Empire rather than R2-D2. They got, you know, they got the lucky sign, the, the short end of the straw, if you will. I'm stuttering constantly to put effects on what I'm saying, hopefully. <laughs> the effect has failed miserably. Yeah, well, we ain't playing no co-op, but neither are we playing any Swap Force characters because they are locked out. But speaking of being locked out, 
actually this has nothing to do with being locked out, I just wanted to make for a smooth transition because instead what's being locked in is prison break here of the Earth element, you know, his like poor glory. He is the poster boy, the flagship character, you, uh, as you will, for Light Horse. If you look at the Light Core icon, then it's actually Prison Break representing Light Core, and that's just because his beams are the perfect thing to light up. It just really adds a lot of symbolic nature to his character, you know, it just presents his beams with such sheer power of light. That's exactly what they are, they are light beams. The beam is supreme, and people still don't like this character, and I still don't know why. He's good, guys, I promise you. Look at that, it was so annihilative. I almost feel sorry for these guys right now. But as always, I almost can't have it. So let's pick up Flint's missing stuff. No missing stuff left behind. And I'm gonna continue platforming because this game introduced the World of Skarders to the jump button. Not quite the beacon review again, but I still am yet to find that. Oh boy, let's take down that dude, because apparently crystals don't count. Oh, but, but this beam is a premium in your hand, very much so. And actually, let's just pick up that story score because I feel like it. See what I mean? Wide open area. Nothing barren about it. So we have the magical pyro thingy, thingy McClob. Is one of the most spectacular displays of magic in all of Skylands. Oh yeah. They also theorized that staring at the theory? might actually cause severe blindness. Perhaps that's why Dix is <coughs> blind. <laughs> anyway, let's be continuing on. Making that jump right there like an absolute champ. Uh, booyah. No way, really? That's what swaps are so much. I've never played this game before, so I wouldn't know. So only a Skylander with rocket power can take on this challenge. I always call it flight. I don't care if it's officially named Rocket, I'm calling it flight all the same. Not that we're gonna be tackling any of those, because again, the Swap Force characters are locked out. I have done any Swap Force lock before, but it was utilizing the Swap Force characters in Trap Team. And spoiler alert, I won. So you know you can go and uh, go on ahead and watch back that live stream if you so felt like it. Why would I forget that? I mean, that's basically what the entirety of the level is surrounding. The fact that Woodbro is in danger and needs our help. You know, it's like the Lego City place that's... Oh no, Lego City is under trouble by criminals and they need you to build the thing because it was destroyed. And then so, you know, Lego person goes, Hey! You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know, I'll just have to edit in one of the most iconic um, Lego trailer moments. <laughs> A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Start the new rescue helicopter. Hey, build the helicopter. And off to the rescue. Prepare the lifeline. Lower the stretcher. And make the rescue. The new emergency collection from Lego City. The studio for Lego trailers are memorable, and that's the importance behind promotional material, um, you have failed in your marketing if you don't create brand recognition through your ads. The whole idea is that ads stay in your head and then when you're in the supermarket about to buy something, you see something and you're like, oh I remember the ad for that, that was pretty cool, I'm going to buy it. That's the one sole purpose of advertising my friend and if you don't fulfill upon that purpose then you are a failure, so just deal with it. I know, excellent life lessons from yours truly. You know, if you're bad at your job, chances are you're never going to get any better at it, so just quit and do something that you're going to be more better at. <laughs> All of this is advice that you should not be listening to. In fact, the best advice I can give you is not to listen to my advice. You're welcome. So yeah, let's be pushing these into place, once again, because I feel like it. And what can I say? I want some stars. I mean, like, stars. Uh, Portal Master rank. Good. I'm not even uh, sure if uh, I can recall whether I've missed a missing part for Flynn yet or whatnot, though. I must be perfectly honest with all of you. But hey, at least that's pushing into place. Because there's the thing, these levels are long, but when you speed through them, you know, they're much, much quicker and can actually be quite fast paced points, even if they do really lack in originality in areas. Because seriously, Jungle Theme, you couldn't come up with anything better than Jungle Theme. And this is coming after a game with a freaking singing drill for crying out loud. So you go from a singing drill to this. 
Okay then. Yeah, Vicarious Visions definitely put more effort into this game's presentation than what they did its um, level design. But at the end of the day, you know, for areas where they aim to soar, they most certainly saw because this game looks magnificent. To a point where I think congratulations are even in order. Ooh, that guy is trying to hit me right now. Boom! From up top. Now we're getting, once again, impressive for jump button. We like that jump, uh, jump button, it's a good button. Not as good as the be good at game button, but again, I can't seem to find that button on this controller right now. Maybe it's because it's the Last of Us 2 controller, who knows? You know, I'm not gonna dive into that controversy. I think I've addressed my opinion on Last of Us 2 enough. And speaking of opinions, it is of my opinion, I'm going to be talking out for Walker Skarner. Actually, no, it isn't. It's it's a lock. This is rules we're talking about here. So naturally, it's not an opinion. It's a must do. But really, you know, I created a smooth transition, didn't I? So I fulfilled upon my purpose and what I was trying to say. I'm like an ad fulfilling upon my purpose. I've never felt more honoured. Yeah, whatever you say, Whamshell. And for some reason, his voice sounded really low right there. I don't know, maybe I'm just hearing things. I've waited to be mashing some buttons. And uh, approaching near enough the end of the level already, man. This is going to be a short debut episode. I could do two levels per episode, but my face cam cuts off at like the 33 minute mark ish, purely because my phone can only record videos in 4 gigabyte chunks, and once a 1080p video, such as the face cam, hits 33 minutes, it has hit that 4 gigabyte marker, so it has to cut out for a few seconds in order to start a fresh recording. So in other words, by making shorter episodes, I make my editing a whole lot more easier, because I don't need to worry about the face cam having just cut out, and you can connect everything back up again. Because yes, I do have um, the game audio separate to my commentary, so that then, you know, if I need to adjust things on a microscopic level, such as the volume of what I'm speaking or the volume of the game, then it's so much more easier to adjust that way. I wait. Yeah, my plan is not to lose one from the first episode, but so far I'd say it's not going horribly, especially since, you know, this guy definitely has quite a chunky health bar. Okay, that guy's shot just, you know, denied all laws of physics, but then it's scarred as it never has and never will care about physics. Yeah, take him down with upside and strike, which is an absolute badass of a move. Oh, watch out for his uh, blasty thing that Bob right here. Boom! And just like that, Woodrow has been saved. And hey, I might be the 500 health. If push came to shove, I had that banana off the side there. But in the end, I'm too awesome. I didn't need no bananas. This is not a line of work for bananas, my friend. If you wanted bananas, it should have gone into some other industry and not the miserably failing industry because uh, when I said I wanted more stars from collecting all of Flint's missing stuff, I completely missed one of Flint's missing stuff. That stuff shall remain missed forever. Yeah, next time I say something, I should probably do it now, right? Because if you're thinking now, I'm thinking the exact same thing. And it's as they say, great minds think alike. And by they, I mean me, because my mouth opened and words came out. Well, here the day is, my friend, so deal with it, in the words of Mighty Tough Look. Now, what's funny about this lock is that I've actually came prepared for once all these characters are level 20 and fully upgraded. And mostly because in most of the games, when you would level up, it would be a huge buff because you completely regenerate all your health. Not in this game. In this game, when you level up, you just get the maximum health bar. You don't um, fill your health up back up to the max. You just kind of like, you gain about 30 or 40 health-ish for a level up, so it's really not as beneficial. And you don't defeat as many enemies around you as you do in other games as well. So naturally... I'm not going to rely on level ups getting me out of really sticky situations like I have done in locks in the past. Can't shape my plan around poor convenience, especially since, and I said pure, not poor, because convenience can be either poor or great. You know, in, in the example of Captain America of War with Baron Zemo, his plan is based on, is solely around convenience, and that turned out 
quite great for him now, didn't it? It was pure convenience at its very finest, and you know, because everything was so convenient and happened in very specific ways, that's how Zemo's plan was able to be enacted upon. And yeah, I still love Zemo as a villain, I still think he's one of the MCU's best, since he is incredibly brainy, let's be honest, he is smarter than a grand majority of the Avengers, especially the ones in Civil War, apparently. Like I'm just saying, most of the most intelligent characters weren't even in Civil War. Sure, you had Iron Man in for free, but characters like Doctor Strange, you know, and um, Bruce Banner, they were nowhere to be seen. And Reed Richards hasn't even been put in the MCU yet, even though Reed Richards is the smartest character of the entirety of the um, Marvel comic book continuity. So when he gets put into the MCU, oh boy, that's going to be fun to watch. Attack a training dummy. Oh, but, but do I have to? They're just back here, minding their own business. You know, I got a big pointy thing that I slam at enemies really, really hard. You know, surely it's going to be quite painful for these poor little fellows right here. They don't deserve such, you know, disruption. Okay, fine, I'll hit it. It was a nice hit, wasn't it? And the poor, poor training dummies. What do they deserve to get hit like this? They're poor. You know, lonely, soulless experience. Wouldn't want to be a training dummy right now, I'll tell you that much. Oh boy, not this ship. Anything but a ship. Oh boy, let's count again. Yeah, I will. Ah, where's that enchantment? You know, an, an invincibility enchantment would have been very, very useful for the Skyrim. And yet instead, you use it on freaking training dummies. What is wrong with you, bro? Anyway, we have Cascade Glade to be heading to in the next episode. But for now, this one is going to be coming to an end. And uh, once we tackle Cascade Glade a week from now, I will see you again. But until that very moment, peace. And thank you so much as always for watching.